Okay, so welcome to the very first World Nomads Google Hangout. This is a uh, fairly monumental occasion for us here at World Nomads. Um, it's the very, very first Hangout, and it's an exceptionally special one here. Um, my name is Jesse Perez. I'm the um, EP of video at World Nomads, and I'm your host for this Hangout on Air. And I'm also very proud because I've been working closely with the, the other people joining me on this Hangout today to create a unique and beautiful travel series. And they are the Passport and Plate Italy scholarship winners. And we have Sophia Levin from Australia, Elena Valiatori from the US, and Tree Fan from Vietnam. And today we're also going to be joining um, one of the filmmakers who, uh, who actually put together some of the films that we've done in this uh, Passport and Plate series. So, um, so welcome to everyone here who's joining us. Um, a bit of a background as to what we're actually doing here with Passport and Plate for those people who aren't familiar with what we do. Um, for about eight years, World Nomads has run scholarships in travel writing, travel photography and travel filmmaking. And we've selected uh, talented amateurs and gave them a, a hand up to make their, uh, their passion into a profession. Um, we send them off into a, a lo exotic locations and they're mentored by professionals in the field. And in 2014 this year, we decided to do a little bit of a new type of scholarship and we found that a lot of travellers were really passionate about food and food was a, a huge part of travel. And we decided to, um, to build a scholarship around that and, and send three travellers off, off to Italy this year to, um, to discover their, uh, their food passion and to explore some incredible regions in Italy. Um, we wanted food explorers that we sent out to discover new techniques and tastes and attitudes to food and living, and we called the, the uh, scholarship Passport and Plate. So um, where else would you go for the first one but to Italy? I mean, Italy is known for its food. It's got some incredible um, recipes and, and destinations, and there's this huge kind of cultural thing too that's really interesting to explore around food. So we partnered with uh, three regional tourism authorities and sent our food explorers and the filmmakers to document their experiences. So we went to uh, three different regions, Cinca Terra, Lunga Marrero and Emilia Romagna. And um, these are regions that not a lot of travellers go to but they're all known for various different aspects of, of food and, and they have some incredible history and they're, they're one of those, loca they're, they're these locations that are a little bit off the beaten path but, um, but are certainly really worth going to check out. So what we're going to do today on the Hangout is we're going to talk to the food explorers about Italy, the food and wine they discovered and, and the people they met. Um, I'm also, I'm also going to ask them about their experiences of being part of the World Nomad Scholarship and how it's changed them and whether it's helped them to turn their passion into a living. Um, we're going to talk to Carl too about what it takes to make great travel films and what the techniques you could use to make your own films even better. So this is a Google Hangout. You guys can get involved, who, um, everyone who's watching here. If you've got a comment or a question that you'd like to put any of the food, to, to any of the food explorers, you can do that um, by putting a comment on the G Plus event page or on the YouTube watch page or send us a tweet using the hashtag Passport and Plate. Our team in Sydney here, Phil, is uh, working on the moderation board, so he'll put them live in the Hangout for us to, to answer. So let's start, let's start with uh, Sophia. Um, you went to, uh, let's, t let's talk about the, the region that you went to. Hi, Sophia. Hi, good morning. Well, good morning for me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's 8 o'clock in Sydney here, and it's, uh, I think, 2100 GMT around the world, so welcome, Sophia. Thank you. How are you feeling after your trip? Uh, a, a little bit depressed to be back at home. <laughs> no, it's, um, it, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling very good. Uh, just looking at all of the photos and the videos that you guys have been posting, just uh, it's increased my appetite, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like an incredible experience, and we've got all of the three films that you've produced up live in the series. Can you talk us through some of the, the things you experienced there? Like, it, it looked like an absolute whirlwind of food and it, it, it was almost like you got overwhelmed by the whole experience. Can you talk to us about some of the highlights and things that you experienced and what stood out for you? Yeah, for sure. I, I was. I still am completely overwhelmed. It's, if somebody had said to me previously, you know, Sophia, what is your dream trip? I think now I could get back to them and say it's exactly what we did for those eight days in Langay. It was just 
lots of drinking, lots of eating, and lots of trying to get to the next winery and the next restaurant. That was amazing. Um, we saw lots of little producers along the way as well, which was really interesting. So rather than, rather than just going to restaurants, we also were led into the home of uh, a uh, hazelnut farm. Yeah. So for anybody who likes Nutella, you haven't tried Nutella until you've tried, tried freshly crushed hazelnut um, um, in a little in family house, family basically. Family. Wow, so, so compared to Australian Nutella? Australian Nutella, well I think it, it, all, it all comes, it all comes from, from there, there. But, mm. but it's the same as the difference between real peanut butter and just peanut butter in a jar. You, just, you right. can't go back. <laughs> I can't have it anymore. <laughs> and, and you went truffle hunting in one, in one of the episodes, you go truffle hunting. What was that like as an experience? It, it was amazing. The, the guy pulled out tr truffles that would have been worth thousands of dollars. Yeah, it was, it was really impressive. So. First of all, the dogs were just amazing. If you'd watch the videos, you'd know that there were just puppies everywhere, so I was hooked. You just show me a puppy and I'm finished, so that was a good start. Uh, and from, from there, we kind of walked down a little hill, a little hill I was in completely inappropriate clothing, which I learned far too late. <laughs> and then we just followed him and we followed his dogs, uh, and he just has this amazing relationship where he was kind of, I guess, even barking at them in Italian, as in the man at the dogs, not the dog at the man. <laughs> Um, and then just followed the nose basically and we dug out these truffles but then when we sat, he'd actually already been before he took us that morning and when we sat down to have lunch he just gets this blue handkerchief and just opened it, let it fall open onto the table and there were just all these different sized truffles up to, you know, kind of the same size as my fist, some of them. It was just incredible. My, my mouth just went, oh my god. <laughs> um. So one of the things that we do talk about in the films is um, is the kind of people that you encounter and all these different incredible characters. Can I mean the truffle guys? One, can you talk us through some of the other people that you met there that left an impression on you? Yeah, absolutely. I think that the people were my favourite part um, at, um, by the end of it. Uh, uh, first of all, the, all the priorities, priorities, or how I or how I wish that everybody had their priorities. It's priorities. It's, it's all about all about. Uh, Sharing and eating around the table with friends and strangers and uh, family and people you love always come first. And I think that's really special. I think you forget that living in a big city a lot of the time. Um, so we can definitely learn a thing or two from there. Uh, and in terms of the individual, the standout was definitely it. Was an older gentleman. Older gentleman. I think he's 67. He might be 68 by now. Um, and he cooked us just the most incredible meal in his in his tiny little restaurant. Um, um, he's also an artist, and so this was the guy in the videos who had a tree behind him of, of ladies and wear just brass. Just an inspiration. It <laughs> was, was just hilarious. I think hilarious. at one point, think we, at one point we, we asked him, you know, what's you know, what's with all the brass? What's with all the brass? <laughs> and he and he was he actually very respectful. He waited until I was out of the room, and then he and then he he whispered in Carl's ear, apparently. He just said, it's because I love women, <laughs> which I thought was brilliant. brilliant. That's fantastic. And so we've all got um, your filmmaker with us too, Carl Pendel, who has just joined us. Welcome, Carl. Are we hearing, are we hearing Carl there? Let's see. Uh, sorry, Jesse. I'm just. Uh, it's Phil here. I'm just trying to get Carl the audio up. Can you? Uh, can, you just, can you just? Can you just let people know about the show at the moment, and, and uh, they can see the series there? Oh yeah, that's right. So if you um, we've got some useful links uh, for you on the right hand side of the screen there. So. You can check these any time to be taken to the um, Passport and Plate web series on YouTube or you can find out more about World Nomad Scholarship <coughs> and how you can find out where the next one's open. So We've I think got we've Carl got now, mate. Carl now. Welcome, Carl. How are you? All right. How are you? Very well. Thanks for joining us. No so problem. Incredible films that you've put together there for us. It was, um, we, we were gobsmacked in the office when we received your material. It was shot all in beautiful 4K and it just looked fantastic. So well done for that. Thank you. Thank you. And how was the experience with, with working with Sophia? I mean, that sounds like a terrible day in the office. Oh, it was awful, yeah. I never want to have work with her again. She's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> no, she, no she, she was great to work with. She was lovely. 
Yeah, and and what would some what were some highlights for you in terms of of going there as a filming opportunity? What were some of the things you loved capturing? Um, kind of says there's no. I mean, you go to this part of Italy. There's no really bad places to visit. To be honest, it's all kind of really beautiful. Um, I mean, Italy is stunning, and this part of Italy is just especially stunning. So uh, it was just a great experience. I mean, I particularly like shooting feel, food because that's kind of my background. Um, but I get a big kick out of watching people and filming people. So again, um, I get a big kick out of that. It's just um, people watching and uh, watching what people do and, and filming it as best you can. It's capturing the moments. You're going to miss a lot of moments, but it's just capturing those moments as best you can. And um, and that's what I try to do. And I, I hope I hope it I hope I succeeded. <laughs> you did very well. There was an interesting photo we got um, from Sophia, actually, I think, with, with you uh, dressed up in a big bee suit. Can you talk us through what, your trouble with uh, with bees during filming? No, 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 no trouble with... No, no. I haven't had any problems with filming, um, bees. I just, I've got a bit of a problem with getting stung, kind of. Um, and, and, and what happened was that the, our guide um, got stung by a bee as we went out filming before we got kind of suited up and so we thought it would be a good idea if we got suited and booted. Um, so I got in that stupid yellow suit and started filming which was which was kind of mad. Um, and I think that picture's gone viral. We're <laughs> <laughs> posting that up so people can have a, have a little bit of a look at that. Yeah, no, so please don't. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so uh, you shot your um, your films in 4K this this year. Um, can you tell us about that? Was was that your first film that you've shot in 4K? It looks it looks amazing. It looks like you're there. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of weird because um, I, I hadn't shot that much with that camera. It just kind of almost had just come out when I started filming, and I'd been shooting with a GH3. And I used to shoot with a. And this is really boring, but I used to shoot with a Canon, and I dumped Canon, and I. Shooting on the start shooting on GH3 and then the GH4 came out, which was this 4K camera. Mm. And I'd experimented with it a bit, but I kind of knew my way around the camera from shooting with the GH3. Mm. Um, and I thought, well, the codec on it is pretty good, so to shoot in 4K for the whole thing, the file sizes were manageable. So I thought, well, why not? Let's just film the whole thing in 4K and see what happens. And and that's kind of what I did really. We are going a little bit into film nerd territory here, but that's we are a little bit. Sorry, I do apologise for people. Okay, but this is, filmmaking is all part of the hangout as well, yeah, so there's, there's people is. interested in in, um, in how you approach that stuff. So, what kind of uh, advice would you give to filmmakers that are looking to do uh, travel films, and what what are your sort of uh, general tips for, for um, people who want to get into the travel filmmaking process? It kind of really depends on what you're filming, to be honest. Um, for the stuff that we were doing, which is kind of running around um, and shooting what we were seeing, it's, it's travel really light. Um, have a half-decent microphone on top of your camera. Um, and the, the best thing I can advise is um, always carry a monopod. That's, that's kind of the one top tip I would, it would... Monopod is kind of what I use for most of my things when I'm shooting like that. And if anyone wants to um, to find out how to make uh, good travel films too, we've put together a little bit of a mini series of um, a few tips there that you can also see in the sh in the showcase. So if you want to check that out, you can see that stuff. Now, um, Tree, we're going to talk to you a little bit. Your your uh, films are still in production, and we're still uh, yet to see them, but they shall be up on online in the next couple of weeks. So welcome, Tree. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. How are you? Very very well, thank you. So this was quite a unique experience for you. Um, just to give our viewers a bit of a background on, on Tree, uh, Tree was actually in uh, MasterChef Vietnam, and um, he was a finalist. And uh, he put together a great recipe for us on the Passport and Plate application, and we decided to send him to, to Italy. So how, how was it to go to, uh, to Italy from, from Vietnam? Yeah. Um, well, it's... Uh... The whole journey for me was really amazing. It's uh, it's quite a, a bit of a conscious shock at first for me because uh, I've never tra been traveled to Europe, and uh, so you know uh, I'm from uh, Vietnam and an Asian country, and then go to another continent and to um, to learn about the, uh, the the culture of a of new culture and to try new food, and that for me was um, that what excited me. And um, 
Because yeah, in in some of your uh, in some of the films that we'll see in the next few weeks, you, you're talking about how in Vietnam it's almost uh, you, people don't encourage you to become a chef in Vietnam because it's not considered to be a, a very high money making profession. So, what, what's it like to be a Vietnamese person to be an aspiring chef? Um, yeah, I think um, for me, I have I have a hard time, you know. And to to convince people to believe in my uh, career choice because frankly, being a chef in Vietnam is kind of like a dicey career money wise. <laughs> and, pun pun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's you know it's it's long hours and bad money and you have to stand on your feet all the time. It's kind of like a hard labor job, and um, so I don't think many Vietnamese parents want the, the kids to, to work in the kitchen because it's, it doesn't pay that much and also because um, a little bit of my background I'm from a uh, you know, kind of like a gifted high school and when graduated from high school all of my friends all went to universities and or I'd study abroad and they wanted they, they, they all aspire to get a bachelor degree and to um, to get a, a, um, a job um, but for me, I, you know, I, I don't want to go to university. I just want to be a chef, and uh, and so that you know, being you know, being different in Vietnam is kind of risky because um, it's just like uh, the path has been chosen for you, and if you don't take the path, it's gonna, it, it's it's not going to end well. But I believe in myself, and I believe in the. In my choice, so I just went for it. And that's that's what you led you here. Yeah. So, how much experience with Italian food did you have in Vietnam? Um. Well, uh, my knowledge of Italian food only consists of uh, pasta, risotto, pizza, and perhaps some tiramisu, mm. and that's all. That's mm. what I I, I watch on TV. Mm. And how and so, what sort of influence did the um, did the Italian uh, chefs and and those kind of guys have on your uh, on your uh, aspiring um, chefdom? Did they give you any advice or any any hints or tips? Um, yeah, they they were very helpful. You know, I had um, I had three cooking sessions during my time in Italy, and the chefs there were you know they they showed me all the tips and tricks into uh, of making. Uh, a great Italian dishes, and uh, I, you know, I just I learned everything. I tried to absorb everything and uh, to learn from them, and you know, just to to hone the skills. Um. Great. So, just oh, sorry, we just got a bit of a technical issue there. <laughs> That's that's fantastic. It sounds like you had such a great time there, Tree, and we're really glad that we're able to uh, to give you that experience. And and I mean, it is off the the back of your your own ability. So congratulations with all that. We've actually got a question here uh, via Twitter um, from uh, Alicia. Um, Sophia Languero is a bit off the beaten Italian path. What made it so special? And should I go? Yes, you should go. Absolutely, to answer that question first. Um, what made it special? I think it's, it's, it's got to be the, the food and, and the culture. So it's that certain, aside from just being absolutely blessed in terms of uh, what Mother Nature provides in that area. So you've got the hazelnuts and the truffles, which mm. I mentioned. Um, they're big on cheese, beautiful cheeses that are aged in caves and up high and in all different places. Um, and then the wine, of course. I mean, I was I was really excited to um, whenever I see a bottle of a Barolo or Barbera now on the menu in Melbourne, um, yeah. I get really excited until I see the price tag because <laughs> it's actually really <laughs> expensive, um, and they don't often serve it by the glass, so it's it's a bit of a treat. Yeah. Um, and but what makes it really special is the generosity. So. I mean, we were sitting there, uh, and there, I remember there was this American guy who looked like um, he was just traveling by himself, uh, and this was just at lunch, and we were eating our tire in, our pasta, the beautiful pasta, and he was kind of peeking over to try and see, you know, what the locals were eating, um, and they just kind of said, you know, do you want a, do you want a glass? Do you want to do a swap or just try it? So 
it's it's that willingness to share and to not necessarily save the best bottle or the lights bite or anything uh, for a special occasion. They just want to bring it out whenever possible and just uh, show people who don't necessarily have that experience at home. And it's it's a really beautiful thing. Mm. No, it looks like you were having quite a good time. There is a, a whole episode dedicated to, to wine if people want to watch that one with Sophia. <laughs> She's looking, there's, there's a series of, of shots that Carl gets where he's taken about 20 shots in a row of, of Sophia drinking different wine in different outfits and different hairstyles. And it's, it's a fantastic <laughs> piece of work there, Carl. And Carl, did you get any wine on the, on the job? Or was uh, you, were, um, you were a sober professional? I'm drinking it now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> did you take a bottle home, did you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm still, I'm still going, working my way through it. I thought I'd open it this evening so I could uh, bring back happy memories. <laughs> it's funny, for a second I forgot that you were in England and I was looking, oh, Jesus, it's a bit early in the morning for you to be drinking a glass of wine. I saw him secretly in the corner there just having a glass while we're talking. <laughs> this is my fifth bottle, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fantastic. So um, the other thing I wanted to do uh, to talk about in this uh, hangout is um, what it's like to be part of a World Nomad Scholarship and, and what that actually means. So, um, Tree, I might start with you. Like, how did you become aware of the Passport and Plate Scholarship and what prompted you to, to, to get involved with it? Oh, uh, yes. Um, you know, I, I came by the, uh, the Passport and Plate opportunity very unexpectedly because uh, I was on Facebook one day and then a friend of mine he posted something about the World Nomads opportunity, um, you know, going to Italy to uh, eat uh, to eat a local food and to learn local culture and stuff like that. And um, the funny thing is, it was only you know, three days before the deadline. Mm -hmm. And then I, at first, I I hesitated at first because I don't think that I could pull off something, you know, a recipe, and then you know. Just uh, in such a short time, but then you know, I I went for it, and I thought, hey, just why don't I give it a try? Why don't I, have, I give it a shot? You know, why what I've got to lose? And there you go, boom. And Sophia, how, how was how did you get involved with it, and what was your sort of experience with with getting part of um, passport and plate? Yeah, um, I mean. I've, I, excuse me, I've been signed up to your mailing list, uh, I suppose, for, for years. And I used to enter the travel writing scholarships uh, regularly. I think if it's more than once, you can say regularly. Um, and never quite made the cut and then started making uh, money uh, from writing and was no longer eligible. So when I saw, I think the, the subject of the email was something like, food lovers, we want to send you to Italy and you could not have picked a better title for someone like me to, to go and click it. Um, so yeah, so just um, the, the recipe that I did was a, a farmhouse fig tart, which is um, something that uses all the produce from uh, southern France, which is where my grandparents have a house. Yeah. Uh, my mom's from the UK, so they travel there quite often. Um, and then in terms of being involved, it's, it's interesting because it, it was one of the best experiences I've had in my life. But it was really tiring. Um, so you do have to be prepared, I suppose, to kind of be turned on and be in front of the camera. And luckily, Carl was uh, is a bit of a pro, so he was he was able to say, you know, you do this again, or you don't you don't want that light doing that on you. That's not that's not flattering. Or <laughs> do this and do that. Um, so it was. I mean, we, we made a really good team, which was which was useful. But um, as well as all the fun stuff, you you are actually working at the end of the day, um, cool. and yeah. you have a responsibility to report back to people and, you know, make sure that you actually do the area justice because, I mean, even even though Carl's videos were amazing and we had an amazing time, there's there's nothing quite like actually being there and, and doing it. Mm. And it's it's one of those things with, with the scholarships. Jason Edwards, who runs our photography scholarships, he always says that when he gets a, a mentee on board, they go 14 hours a day. They don't stop. They're in the mud. They just... <laughs> he, yeah. he, he makes a point of breaking his mentees. They always <laughs> end up much more enriched at the end. And we just got another question here um, uh, for both of you, Tree and, and um, Sophia. So what are your um, other uh, top food destinations on your list? Tree, where would you like to go next? Um, well, I think uh, it would 
a toss between Morocco and France. You know, I have always been a I have always been a fan of French cuisine ever since I learned how to cook, and um, it was you know it was like on the top of my list of of the must try. But then um, you know, and then a later time, I I get you know I got to know about the uh, Middle East. Uh, Middle Eastern cuisine and then Moroccan cuisine, and I, I really like that. You know the the spices um, and the, the the approach, their approach to food really captivate me. So I think if you know if I uh, had a chance to to go to anywhere in the world to um, to eat, I think it would either be France and uh, Morocco. And you, Sophia, where's where's your? Own, I, I imagine the second trip to. Uh, to Italy would be on the cards, isn't it? I, don't, uh, I could just go back to Italy again and again and again for the rest of my life, but there's so, there's so much to see. Um, there, there are a few places on my list. I've, I've actually, uh, aside from being to Disneyland when I was very young, I've never done the America thing properly. Um, so to be able to do that and then also so North America as well as South America and chuck Mexico in there as well, that would be amazing. Um, but India as well, I've heard amazing things about India. Um, in terms of it being a bit of a culture shock, which I actually quite like. Um, and I think I'd have to risk my health and safety and try some of the street food, which is exactly what you're not meant to do, apparently, but I just don't think I'd be able to resist. <laughs> we, we always encourage people to, to try to take a few risks when they go travelling, and I think with street food in India, you, you, can't, you can't not, even though it might be a little bit dangerous and you always do take that risk. But, the World Nomads crew went to India last year, and we haven't eaten. As, I've never eaten that well in my life. It's just it's yeah. amazing. <laughs> um, we've got a, two apologies to make here. We, we've had uh, Seth Coleman, who is going to be one of our filmmakers, to join us. He's actually in India at the moment. He's going. Um, he's in the north of India, and he tried to get on board with us, but uh, the, the infrastructure just wasn't there for him to to get connected. And and Elena is. Um, Unfortunately, can't make it with us too. She's uh, trying to get home for Thanksgiving, and what Thanksgiving wouldn't be complete without an airport uh, hold up. So, um, so yeah, sorry about uh, we, we didn't get to have a chat with those guys. Um, one thing we wanted to talk about too is um, just how to get involved with the scholarships programs that we run on World Nomads. So. Um, we make it available uh, for, for people. We want to provide opportunities for people like like Tree, Sophia, Elena, and Carl, and the rest. Um, we have scholarships in writing, photography, and filmmaking. So if you wanted to know um, how to be amongst the next uh, scholarship program, go to uh, worldnomads.com forward slash learn or click the link on the, the right side of your screen. Um, and that's uh, that's... Pretty much it for today's hangout. We've got oh, hang on, we've got one final comment here um, from Anima, who says, "I want to be a world nomad." Well, Anima, <coughs> you are one. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's great. Thank you for for joining us, everybody. And um, I'd like to thank our food explorers and filmmakers for joining us at some odd hours around the world. And um, thanks for watching and sending through your questions and comments. It's been really fun, and we want to do more of these. Um, make sure that you add world nomads to your circles and. We'll let you know when our next Hangout is happening. So thanks, everyone, for watching, and thanks to the Passport and Plate Food Explorers. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.